It's only going to get better. We're going to have a call in just a few moments, but I want to lay a foundation, share a few things. And if you're visiting with us, we welcome you to the gathering. And uh, we've been gathering around here for quite a while now, about 10 years in this building. And uh, But how many of you know we need God to move in this hour? Probably at more desperate, it's more urgent right now in this nation at this moment that God would move than maybe at any other time in the history of our nation. I really mean that. Any of you feel the same, but uh, these are desperate times. I uh, wanted to share a couple things and I'm going to get into some good stuff. (laughs) But I I came out of the persuasion that pastors should be... um, We should raise the standard. We should be the conscious of the state. No amens, but uh, that's what Diedrich Bonhoeffer believed, that um, he had a group, a small group, very small, that would stand for truth against Nazi Germany. They called them the emergency pastors or whatever, something like that, but they stood, and uh, they didn't bow to Nazism. They didn't bow to um, the system of the day and of course Diedrich Bonhoeffer was he became he was a martyr he was killed for his stand for righteousness and um, my own opinion is this that you know we're called to a people you better tell the people what the Lord has to say Amen. we're called to a place God has a person for a place a place for a person an hour for the voice a voice for the hour but you also there was a state of the union address this week I didn't watch it. I'd encourage you, if you did, you may want to. um, Let me just say this. The scripture that comes to my mind is, woe to those that, that, uh, you know, bring darkness to light and light to darkness, who who call evil good and good evil. And um, I don't have a lot of confidence in all of that. And then there were the Grammys. I know some people are wondering, what, man, what about the Grammys? It just shows me that Satan is coming out of the closet. And those who, their father is the father of lies. And uh, you're either going to be God's your father or your father's the devil. That's what Jesus would say. If he was here this morning, he'd tell you, you're, on, you're either for me or you are always against me. One or the other. But anyway, the cram, he's just pointed out. It, folks, stuff we knew all along. What's been done in secret now is being shouted in the housetop. And then I read, where part of the sun broke off this week. Now, I know there have always been solar flares and things like that, but I understand scientists were baffled. Signs in the sun. Does that remind you of anything? This, Jesus. I want, it's almost like Jesus had an inside track as to what's going to happen in the days in which we're living. He said, and there will be signs in the sun in the moon and the stars and on earth, distress of nations, great anxieties with perplexity. That means there'll be many uncertainties. And then he said, Jesus said, men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things coming on the earth. They'll be thinking what's coming next. And then the war in Ukraine. How many of you know that whatever the media is telling you, it's probably just the opposite of what is really happening? We've, we've come to that conclusion. And anyway, we've been there for quite a while. It's just now we're realizing it more and more. But I was stunned this week to hear how many Ukrainian soldiers have been killed. None of it had to have been. There are those who want war with Russia. It's probably not very wise to go to war with a nuclear power. And anyway, there are those that want war. It's Really amazing. And then it came out how we, no, we didn't do it. Say, I didn't do it. It was given the order from Joe Biden to bomb the Nord Stream pipeline. And we thought that's the way it was anyway. This has all come out. Everything hidden is being revealed. And now these things flying over, you know, and uh, 
I don't know what you'll believe about those things flying over. I don't even know if they exist. I, maybe they do. I've learned to trust nothing they say. I trust what God said, but if they are flying over, I saw one report, one that was shot down, was heading towards the Alaskan pipelines. That would be, you know, you blow up theirs, they might blow up yours, but anyway, things going on today. And then last week, I was in Florida with Chris Reed and, you know, the new, he's going to be in just a week or so now promoted over Morningstar. And he was saying how the Lord showed him many years ago that it would be exposed how far communist China had infiltrated the United States government. Our institutions, universities, churches, everything. Boy, is that not coming to pass. And then I saw where Dutch Sheet, God bless Dutch Sheets. Thank God for him. I'm going to talk about him in a minute too, so stay with me. But he showed where a lot of Democrats at this union speech, State of the Union, they wore a little sign right here that said, I love, and the O, I love abortion. And the O was in the shape of a heart. And I just say, well, it's all coming out of the closet. The lovers of life are proclaiming life, and the lovers of death are proclaiming death. I just know who's going to win in the end. But that's the state of this nation, the state of the union. How many of you know we may be in this thing, but we're not of it? We're of a different kingdom. And everything's happening just like we were told. Isaiah 60, darkness will cover the earth, deep darkness of people. But arise because the glory of the Lord. Anyway, that kind of gets me excited. So we need to be reminded of a few things. So go with me if you would quickly. We're going to jump ship and men. But you have to do pastorly things. There are not a lot of people. If they had that emergency pastors group, whatever it was in Diedrich Bonhoeffer's day, I wonder how many would sign up. Probably not a, a whole bunch. And yet, we will stand before God for what we said and what we didn't say when we should have said it. You know the first group tossed into the lake of fire in the book of Revelation? The cowards. Isn't that amazing? Jesus, why did you say that? Because he meant it. Okay, John 17, verse 9. Now, Jesus said, thank God we get to go to what he said. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you've given me, for they are yours. How many of you know, how many of you belong to him? Jesus was, your name could be written there. He, she is yours. Look at verse 11. Now, I'm no longer in the world, Jesus, but these are in the world, and I come to you, Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given to me. Now, that they may be one, but the key is that he would keep them and that we We may be in the world, but go on, he he will explain further. But now I come to you, these things I speak in the world, that they may have joy. Verse 13, verse 14, I've given them your word, and the world has hated them. Because they're not of the world. So that's, if you're not of the world, guess what? The world is not going to like you that much. If you're really liked in the world, you might want to check and see if you're really of the world or not. Because this is what Jesus said, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world. How many of you would like to get out of this place right now? Man, with all the stuff going on, things flying across our nation, stuff, sun, part of the sun breaking off. How many of you would like to say, beam me up, God? Well, I have prayed that you should not take them out of the world, but that you should keep them. You think you'll get more glory keeping you? Then he would just rescue and you out. Absolutely. He's a little bit more powerful than that. They are not of the world, just as I'm not of the world. So basically, Jesus is saying, you're in the world, but you are definitely not of it. So say, I'm in it. I'm in the world. You might want to qualify that. You could think all kinds of things you're in. But say, I'm in the world, but I am definitely not of the world. 
Okay, now, and one more thing. Over in 1 Peter chapter 2 and the beginning there with verse 6. And I could have shared a whole lot more. And I was planning on it, but I want to get to this testimony. Next week, we'll go there. A lot of times I debate with the Lord. God, you sure? You sure I'm supposed to say that? You sure? Are you going to back me up? Yes. Lord, if nobody else will, I'll speak up for you. You know, Diedrich Bonhoeffer, Bonhoeffer had an idea. He had that scripture in mind, those that seek to save their life will lose it. But he that loses his life for my sake will find it. So Diedrich Bonhoeffer lost his life to the Nazis, but he found it for all of eternity. And he's one of those in that great cloud of witnesses with Bob, with Michael, with many others that are rooting us on in this hour. But anyway, look in chapter 2. Behold, I lay in Zion, verse 6, a chief cornerstone, elect and precious. Who is the chief cornerstone? Jesus. He is your foundation, not only the cornerstone. Man, he's your foundation. And he who believes in him will by no means put to shame. You know what the word shame means? Disappointed. How many of you? We'll take a survey. You are disappointed in what God did after you saw the whole story unfold. Now, there are times you wonder when you're going through it. You know, you wonder now, where are you? But when you got to the end, how many of you found God was faithful? Hey, hey, you young guys need to pay attention. Do we have the testimony? He does, you're not going to be ashamed. He goes on. He who believes in me will be put, not put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe, he's precious. To those who are disobedient... The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. And he's a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. I hear people say, well, you don't want to offend anybody. Well, that's not who Jesus was. He offended those who resisted the truth and had their own religion. And uh, so anyway, he came to do that. They stumble being disobedient to the word. But... Okay, where am I going? But you are a chosen generation. Say, I am a chosen generation. I am a royal priesthood. And I am a holy nation. Now, wait a minute. You know, you want to know the real state of the union, state of a nation? Psalm 33, 12. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. What about the nation who has discarded you, God? then you see it's not the blessing. But wait a minute. We're in this nation, but we are of a different nation. So what does that mean about you and me? Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. We'll see these things unfold around us, but you remember what nation you're really in and how we rule. Well, two big things happened this week. One is my... I have a number of them, but one of my spiritual mentors, fathers in the faith, went to be with the Lord this week, Dean Simpson. I don't know if you got to know Dean. How many of you knew Dean Simpson? Mighty man of God. He was like an apostle to missions, and, um, and he was. I remember the day we were in West Virginia, living there, pastoring a little church in the middle of nowhere, I made the mistake when I was younger. I said, God, I'll go wherever you send me, even if it's in the middle of nowhere. And guess what? He took me up on it. And I went there. And I wanted to leave the day I arrived. But he wouldn't let me leave. And anyway, we're, after we got married, we, a lot of stuff happened. I'm along the Tiger River praying, oh, God, use me in missions. Lord, here I am. I'll go wherever you send me. I'm here. I'm available. So I go to this conference in Indianapolis. It's a big conference on the Holy Spirit. Dean Simpson has a booth where he takes mission teams to the nations. And I saw they were going to the Soviet Union. That, at that time, it was still the Soviet Union. I wanted to go where there was danger. That surely wasn't much into the danger part. But I was. Go where, you know, you're really going to cost you something. So I went. 
right before the walls came down. We had no idea we would be there preaching the gospel to people that hadn't heard the gospel in 70 years, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, thousands of people. We would go to park to park to park, stand up on the bench and preach John 3, 16, all because of Dean Simpson taking us and releasing us to go. So I just wanted to honor Dean. Thank you for men like Dean Simpson. How many people gave their lives, invested in young people, that they grew up, and because of their investment at early ages, they had a faith. They have a faith that's strong today. And I give a lot of my faith to Dean because I saw the Lord. Well, the Lord, obviously, but I saw the Lord. We not only went to Ukraine and um, in the Soviet Union, but we went to Cuba. I could tell you a lot of things that happened, but I won't. And then the other thing is revival they say, has broken out at Asbury University. It used to be Asbury College. I've studied revivals all my life. Pensacola spilled out over on us when we were in Mississippi. It was an amazing time. But I, we wanted to go to Asbury because the story of the 1970 revival always, I would watch the video, the story, and I would always tears I would always, I just, I could watch it now. And I was just so thankful that God did something in my lifetime like that. And uh, so we went to Asbury and we walked in Hughes Auditorium where it's happening again right now, I'll tell you. But we walked in there and we just saw God do it again. We went down in the basement and uh, we went to the place a few miles away, Cane Ridge, Kentucky, where the Great Awakening, really instrumental in the Second Great Awakening, I got at the altar of that little church house and prayed, oh, God, do it again. God, do it again. And anyway, um, they say he's done it again. So I'm going to give you a quick foundation, and we're going to call. This is not the only time revival was broken out at Asbury. 1905, during a blizzard, a prayer meeting in the men's dormitory broke, spilled out into the rest of the campus and into the town of Wilmore. In 1908, revival broke out while someone was praying in chapel, and the revival lasted two weeks. And the signifying thing about that, it launched prevailing prayer. 1921, there was another revival. 1950, students started confessing their sin and victories, and an estimated 50,000 people nationwide came to Jesus. In March of 1958, revival began with a student fast. They were praying and fasting and spilled over into chapel, 1970. There was one in 1992, and there's one in 2023. But in 1970, that was the one that so impacted us. Students had gathered. They had this, what they called the great experiment, and they they covenanted it together. They said, okay, there's a group. Let's pray for 30 days and read our Bible every day. Pray and read our Bible and hold each other accountable. So they did that for 30 days. On the 30th day, they got together in a dorm, and uh, they were praying for God to visit their campus, and the leader of that group said, Stop. No more prayer. He's coming. He's coming. They went home, and the next morning, he came. And chapel started at 10 a.m. It was supposed to end at 11. It was going on at 11 that night. It was going on at 11 the next night, 11 the next night, 11 the next night, and a solid week. Uh, Dr. Kenneth, uh, Dennis Kinlaw was his name. He was, a, um, he was the president. He was on a trip in Canada. He was away during this outbreak, and he had, you know, this was before they had cell phones. So he goes into the hotel where he's staying in Canada, and there's a note, we have an emergency in Asbury. Call immediately. He didn't know what was going on. He calls, and his secretary said, we have a problem. He said, what's the problem? Chapel. He said, what could possibly be wrong with chapel? It's not over yet. What do you mean it's not over yet? Anyway, so they tell him what happens. Now, where he called was in a phone booth. And if you heard this, how many of you heard the testimony? Some of you did. 
He said, now, if you weren't a believer, you wouldn't understand. But he said, God invaded that phone booth. The presence of God was in the phone booth. He knew this was real. So he flew back, walks up to Hughes Auditorium. He's very cautiously. You don't just run in and say, well, I'm the president here, you know. Man, you go very cautious, sat on the back row. And so many things happen. He, he talks about a student that got his attention, said, I got to talk to you. And uh, she said to him, I need your help. I'm a liar. I'm a liar. And uh, he said, well, he didn't know what to say. He said, well, why don't you go confess to the last person you lied to and ask for forgiveness? She said, okay, I'll do that. So a couple days later, he sees her running across the lawn at Asbury. And Dr. Kinlaw, I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. He, he said, what do you mean you're free? She said, well, I just confessed to the 33rd person that I had lied to them, and God has set me free. And so anyway, it went on the news. It, uh, they started reporting. Everywhere the students went, revival would break out in those churches. And they said often it was the most unimpressive student that would release the greatest glory. There was a church in uh, somewhere. Some students went, and uh, they asked the pastor. They said, well, these students are here from Asbury. They want to tell us what God is doing. He wasn't that certain. He's one of those pastors that, you know, we give the mic to a lot of people. It is a little risky sometimes. But that guy really thought it was. He didn't know if he wanted to or not, but he did. So these two students, he said, they just, they were nothing. They, they just stood up. They, one got up and said, on Tuesday... God walked onto our campus, and he sent us here to tell you about it, and he told us to tell you he wants to walk into your campus and your church. And this, so anyway, when they sat down, the pastor thought, thank God, that wasn't too bad. So anyway, they carry on with their religious service, and these, there's a group singing behind them. And they go on, they start singing, and into the second message, all of a sudden, one of the guys raises his hand. He says, stop, stop. I can't sing anymore. I need God to do in me what those guys said he's done in them. And he got down, he went down and knelt at the altar. There were more people at that church at 11 p.m. at night than there were when that meeting started, and it went on through the night. Revival went all over the country. It was an amazing time. And what we need is to God to do it again. I don't care what it looks like, sounds like, we need God to move in America. If you really knew how urgent these days were, if you, some of you know, whatever degree you think they're urgent, ramp it up about a hundredfold. It's that uh, urgent. He's, he's but the answer, come on up. Okay, here we no, go. No, you, you do it now. Hey, Devin, thank you so much. Devin, would you introduce, uh, I believe her name is Charity. She's one of the students there at Asbury. So, Charity, we welcome you and uh, we want to hear what God's doing. Amen, amen. Well, uh, we were praying for uh, God to give us somebody. This morning it happened, uh, Miss Charity is here at Ashbury University, and the crazy thing she told me this morning, she said just this morning she signed a contract to go on a missionary trip to the Navajo Nation. And if you know, we're working with the Native Americans, and so she did that so she could raise the funds for her trip, She knew, it, which is just such divine providence. It's absolutely amazing at the accuracy that God has right here. So I'm going to let... Uh, charity testified of what's happening here at Ashbury. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I just give glory to God because I was praying for confirmation this morning about going on this mission trip. And I was like, Lord, if it's your will, please just provide a way and show me that it's you who is leading me. 
And I just want to thank God for just placing me here at Asbury. It's only by His grace that I'm able to be here at this school. I came here my freshman year. I'm a senior right now. And I've just been seeing him move in so many miraculous ways. I pray for this my freshman year with friends and people before me pray for this. Just see this coming to fruition. It's amazing. I've seen people come to Christ that I've never seen go to the altar before. I've seen people receive healing who didn't believe once before. I've seen people step out of their comfort zone to experience Jesus for the first time. And I'm just so grateful. God has been just giving me healing in so many areas of my life that I've never even felt just healing from. So God has been allowed me to pray over people, people to pray over me, people to speak words over me that I needed to hear at the right time. God has been placing me with the right people to see and to speak to. Just like this morning, God is just beyond me. It is amazing. I've seen people come here and stay here. People have not left Hughes since Wednesday morning chapel. It is Sunday morning. And let's praise God. Students are spending the night in Hughes. Students are is reciting to be in Hughes. And that's just miraculous. It is miraculous. And I just praise God for what he is doing, what he will continue to do. I praise God for this opportunity to share my testimony. And I'm just praying that it spreads across the nation. It does not stay in Kentucky, but it spreads across the nation. It continues to touch lives around the world so people can hear and just live in the presence of God. God's word is so beautiful. It is so beautiful. I just thank the Lord. I just thank the Lord. God is so good. Amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Hey, Devin, God, tell us I'm what you're so seeing there. What's happening right now? Well, man, the place is full. <laughs> just over and over, it's uh, it's absolutely awe striking. Uh, I've been every time I come here. There's people here. Uh, just young people seeking the face of God at the altar, praying over each other, weeping. Yes. Uh, I went to another meeting outside of here. They were actually having a love feast, believe it or not. Wesley Wesley evidently had a love feast also. Uh, those people were connected to Ashbury. Uh, this, man, revival seems to be spilling out everywhere. So we're absolutely blown away. Um, I got the call about this revival. Me and Georgia were actually doing a worship set at the gathering Thursday morning. And I was called by one of the guys uh, that we're working with for one of our tent revivals here. And he told me that revival had broken out. I was actually scheduled to be here the next day. And uh, I'm just telling you, man, uh, there have been young people seeking the face of God nonstop, night and day. I am just humbled. I pray that it spreads to every university across the United States of America. I pray that you catch the fire of God. Now is the time to seek God's face and just contend. Uh, and they're going night and day, y'all. And so I know, you know, there's a lot of DNA about Bob Jones and night and day prayer. So I just pray that y'all would catch the fire. Um, we're just humbled. We're, we're in awe of God. That's all I can say. Hallelujah. Thank you, Devin. For being on the scene for us. God bless yes. you, Charity. Thank you so much. God bless you. Amen. Well, praise the Lord, guys. Wow. You want to play some? Now, I don't know if you know this, but Dutch Sheets also had a word recently. Lisa sent it to me. And he saw where revival would come to a college campus and it would spread to many campuses. This was just a couple weeks ago that Lisa sent that to me. And I understand from another young person that's there that it's, it's moved into a number of Christian campuses, but also the University of Kentucky. And, and now we just want it to spread. So this is what I thought we would do the rest of the time this morning. I've asked some of the young people, uh, you guys jump in and pray, whoever. But I want us to pray into that move of God. This is the answer for America. It's Jesus. Jesus is the answer for the nations of the earth. He's the answer, the only answer, but he is a real, sure answer. And, um, and then at the end, we'll have a time around the altar. But could I ask one of you guys to come first, either Brandon or Carla, one of you? Just, let's just pray. Whoever wants to after, just Let's just all pray, pass the mic on, take a moment or so, pray into what God is doing. This is our time. You know what the scripture says? Jesus, the Bible says, call upon me while I am near. Ask for me for rain in the days of the latter rain. 
So while he is near, it's time to call on him with all of our heart. Brandon, you guys. I want to share a dream I had several years ago. My wife and I were part of a founding team for the Justice House of Prayer in Washington, D.C. with the call and Lou Engel. And uh, we prayed for years for then George W. Bush to become a catalyst for pro-life, to end abortion. We prayed for years, end abortion, end abortion, President Bush. And obviously he didn't do it. And, um, but years later, I have this dream where I'm speaking with him. I said, you know, I'm really mad. I'm upset with you. We prayed for you for years that you would help end abortion. You didn't. And I said, but that's okay now because I, now I know that laws don't change men's hearts, but awakenings do. And so now we have an opportunity. I, I've been part of awakenings uh, to some extent. And when Ch- she, that young lady was praying or just speaking, you could feel it. Who's been in part of movements before where the Lord just shows up? All right. Could you feel it? Was it some theological, whatever, whatever, some, de- she just shared a story, sharing a testimony. She's a witness to what's going on. And it's tangible. We've heard those stories. Sorry, I'm not supposed to pray, but <laughs> Smith Wigglesworth, that old story I shared with the kids the other day. He goes to stay with somebody and the woman's husband wasn't saved and she wanted him to pray and her husband to get saved. And he was walking out at the gate. She says, wait, you have it. My husband's not saved yet. And he looked at her, he said, don't change the sheets. Who's heard this story? Man, she doesn't change the sheets that night and the man wakes up and I'll paraphrase, but he wakes up with some encounter with God and gets saved. The anointing is tangible. You can feel it. It rubs off. When you spend time with the king, it rubs off to everybody around you. Everybody that you go in Walmart, you're talking to that person and it's rubbing off on just because you've been with the king. The King of Kings. So God, we do. We ask you to don't stop with Asbury, God. Don't stop there. Come to Moravian Falls. Come to the highways. Come to the bottom. Jesus, you are the only hope for the earth right now. We can't do this without you, Lord. It's always been about you. We've always needed you. But Lord, as Pastor David said, we need you now, God. More now. There's no hope for America, God. There's no hope in D.C. There's no hope for our schools. There's no hope for government, God. You are our only hope. So we're asking God, come. Sweep from sea to shining sea. Holy Spirit, we welcome you and we ask you. We beseech you. Come, Lord. Dear God, Lord, we pray for fire, God, and open flame, God, that nobody can contain, God, that just pour it, just pour it open, God, just pour it as much as you need, God. God, just help everybody, God, any sickness, God, any, any, like, bad thoughts, God, just, God, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus, God, just don't, don't let, if a bad thoughts pop into your head, just say, Satan, you can't do this to me. I'm God. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 God, I can't help but think of just over this year, I've heard people talk about remembrance, remembrance in that. In the Bible, when it says remember, they don't just say it because people have forgotten, but there's a, there's a supernatural thing that happens where when you remember, it's going to happen again. And God, I just think of the Jesus movement video um, uh, movie that's coming out even this month God to remember the Jesus movement of the 70s God and God so we just say remember God remember the moves God remember the Cane Ridge revival God remember the Asbury revival in the 50s and the 70s God Father we're asking for another move of your spirit to awaken the 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 universities and the colleges God the youth in in America God that are so bound up right now God we ask for freedom to be released I remember my Papa Lou he would say you could walk up to anybody and just say cheeseburger and they would get saved God we know that there's an atmosphere there's an atmosphere that you want to release over our nation God where people get saved like popcorn God where it'll just pop at this college at this university at this high school at this middle school God we ask for Wilkes County God in the surrounding region God come Lord Jesus come awaken the young people God awaken their hearts God they're hurting they're hurting and they're crying out for you Jesus they need a savior God we say yes God come and dig the well dig the well here God awaken it again Lord 
शौर्य बाबा Last night we got together with the youth and we me and Dicky were just so encouraged. Uh we usually get together and we have a worship time and uh we did the same thing last night. We we started to worship God and you know we're just telling the youth, "Hey guys, get focused, you know. Consecrate, consecrate, get focused on the presence of God, you know." And uh we found uh some breakthrough and uh maybe Dicky can share a little bit about that too. We We said, "All right, guys, we're going to come together in unity. We're going to start to pray. We're going to start to seek the presence of God." And I'm going to tell you what, the the presence was heavy. It was heavy, and we just began to pray. We began to pray for the presence of God to impact our lives and the nations, the the many nations who need Christ, you know? And uh we felt the flow. We we were going to do a fun activity. We said, "We got a fun activity. We couldn't stop praying." The flow of the Holy Spirit I said we're not going to stop this. The youth really entered in the prayer and uh we didn't do any fun act. The fun activity was interceding. The fun activity was the presence of God. And these these young kids are catching on to it. They're catching on to the hunger. The hunger of the presence of God is going to drive you right to the heart of God too. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Yesterday we started praying with the tongues. Let's just pray. Hallelujah. Oh, I want to see that same fire yesterday that we saw in the youth. Yes. You know, we just prayed and we started to sing. If you feel like singing, just sing. If you feel like just praying in tongues, just do it. Can we get on our feet and just start praying and honoring God? Hallelujah. Horiane no bol shandana lots happening around the world lots happening around the world we are here in our comfort zone on our chair we are sitting and we are like yes lord people are dying here yes lord this is happening there but you are not in their shoes you don't know what's happening but god is grieving god is keeping you in this comfort zone so that you can stand for them so that you can pray for them can we pray in tongues can we pray and give him praise and say god thank you lord thank you jesus ho oh, ho oh. can we shout jesus 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 proclaim his name let's shout his name let's just say his name hallelujah the breakthrough came yesterday because we were shouting jesus hallelujah jesus 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 hallelujah ho riane na bo shanda raba baba ho riane na bo shanda raba baba ho riane na bo shanda raba baba ridanda na bo shanda raba baba baba oh god father lord we marvian fall we not carolinas people lord we are ready god we are ready for your kingdom lord we are ready for your outpouring lord we are ready for new souls god we are hungry for souls god we are hungry for people we are hungry for those youths god we are dying each day god we are hungry for those older people who doesn't know you we are hungry for those our neighbors our oh, witches god we are hungry for everyone lord we want to see your breakthrough lord we want to see people rising lord rise up lord rise up lord rise up Hallelujah Horianda namashade Roborianda nabo Ridanda namashade Roborianda rababa bariandi nabo Ridanda nabo shanda rababa baba Riandi nabo shanda rararara Horianda nabo shanda rabo Ridanda nabo sha Roborianda nabo Ridanda nabo shanda rababa Oh hallelujah I felt like saying one thing when you hammer the even even stone breaks when the when you hammer the stone you know 
but some of us even the spirit of god hits you you cannot break because you're so hard you're so hard that you don't want to break yourself to come before god because we are like oh look at them oh i cannot do this but god says no i want to hammer your heart so that i can pour out my spirit in such a way that you haven't seen it the pieces will come you know it will just burst so much that people will start to feel that heat people will start to feel that heat do you want that do you want that can we can we just ask god to break that stone that stone hard you know can we ask god to hammer us god hammer us with the holy ghost hammer us with the outpouring of his spirit hallelujah riyandi nabo shandara baba ho riyandi nabo shandara is your word not like a hammer is your word not like a hammer oh jesus we need you we welcome you we want you god we welcome you jesus come 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 lord we need you we ask you for an outpouring of arabian falls god we pray that you purge this water that the water the sand would come up out of this well and be a free flowing well in our desert well in this place we thank you jesus nya sonya ka yeri o to ya no ya ka sonya ba yeri o nya ka sonya ba ye o yo ko re o ba sonda yo ko nya ka sonya ba re o ko sonya ka 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 like a fire come like a flood come like the rain let the fire fall let the wind blow let the glory come down let the glory come down nya so God, we need you. Revival's about you. It's always been about you. We need you. Our nation needs you. Our county needs you. We need you. I need you. <laughs> Bring the lost sheep home. Let our nation run back to you. Let us all run back to you. Let us all come back to our first love. God. We want revival now. We want your spirit poured out and we won't stop. We won't stop. We won't stop until we see it come. And we need to pray this in unity. We need to declare it. We won't stop. We won't stop until we see it come, God. Send a wave, God. A wave of revival wash us, God. Reunite our hearts with you. God, sink our hearts. Let us mourn over what you mourn over. Let us rejoice in what you rejoice over, God. Fall on us right now, God. Bob Jones said that the angel over America his name is Union. So Father, I ask right now, release that angel, release the angel Union over America. We just speak to the four winds now and we say release, release, release let Union release the union unity in this nation yes. that we would be one nation under god yes. filled with the fear yes. spill, filled with the spirit of fire let fire be released let union be released in jesus name yes lord i felt like the lord was saying that this revival was going to going to heal the roots in our nation and even as that girl talked the, the first thing coming out of this revival is that she's being commissioned to the native american people the first nation people the americans god you and you had the moravians and you sent them over here god you sent them here because you knew there were people here who needed to hear your voice god and it was the first
First Nations people, God. Lord, we ask that you would use this revival to heal the root of our nation, God, where there's been pain and broken covenant, God. We ask that you would heal it. Even as Devin's coming with this trail of tears assignment, God, we believe that it's all working together for good, Lord, that you are healing our nation, God. That that word about union, God, where there's been frays and fractures, God, we just speak healing and 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 and, and, and like a like a like a weaving, God, that you would weave us together, God, that you would weave the nations together, Lord. You've brought us here to this land. Like Pastor David was saying, there's a people to a place, God, Lord, that you brought people here for this time, God. And so we ask, we bless the Native Americans, God. We ask, Father, that you would resurrect them, God, Lord, like a sleeping giant, God, that you would awaken their people, that you would do a revival in the Navajo community, God, in all these reservations, God, where it's hopeless and dark, God. We just speak life. We ask that you'd break in with revival to the Native Americans, God. We release life. We speak life, God. Lord, we speak life over them in revival and awakening, God. Awaken them in Jesus' name. Oh, yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus, I have a dream. I, in my dream, this year, God has been putting it in my heart to pray for them. When I pray for them, when I had a dream that like this youth are getting their clothes changed into white and they are free of drugs. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And the other day, I was just praying in my bed and he said, he said, I am coming. I am coming. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord. His presence is in here. His presence is in here. Oh, I can't contain it. Yes, Jesus. We said, us, Lord. Yes, we need you, Lord. We can do anything without you, Father. We love you. We love you, Lord. You love you, Lord. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, my gosh. Oh, oh, oh Lord, it's so tight. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, oh Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, oh Lord. Heavenly Father. Abba Yahweh Elohim, we repent our sins, Lord. Father, forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. We legalize homosexuality and we we kill unborn children on this land, Lord. Father, Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, Yeshua Mashiach and David, with your blood, wash us, Lord. Wash us, Lord, with your blood. We need your blood. Holy Spirit, walk with us. We need you, Lord. We need you, walk with us. Holy Spirit, forgive us, Lord, and we need revival on this land, Lord. Father. Cherokee 
Murphy, North Carolina, Nantero 2, and the revival of the Ajusa, Nantero 6, and the revival of Korea, Pyongyang, Nantero 7. Father, we need revival. Yeah. Father, we need revival. Pour out your spirit on the indigenous people, for the Cherokee people. They understand the time and season. They know how to pray, and they know prepare the end time. Yeshua's second coming, and there is a Moravian. We need a Moravian anointing, and we need a Sikar anointing, and we need a Moravian anointing. They preach the gospel first to Jew and the Gentile, and they also preach the gospel to the Cherokee nation. And Father, they were so 24 7, 356 prayer, chain prayer. We need a prayer, we need forgiveness. And we need the anointing of Moravian Lord. They push the gospel all around the world, Father. Father, this nation, this nation, you choose this nation, United States. Father, revival. We need revival, this nation, Lord. Blood of Yeshua, Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, Yeshua, Amen. Father God, we, we, we humble ourselves, Father. God, we thank you for your presence. God, I pray, that, I pray, I pray that you would bring the fire, Father God. Well, I think at, at just at Pentecost, they had been praying, they had been fasting for 50 days, Father. With the students at Asbury, they, 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 they prayed for revival. God, I, I went there, I've been there. I attended there. God, I know that the hearts of those students is revival. God, I pray you would break our hearts, Father God. Break our hearts, God. Lord, break us. Lord, we, we, we kneel, God. We surrender, God. We surrender. We lay, we lay, we lay the stones down. We lay, we lay our sins down. We lay the weights, Father God. Lord, break our hearts, Lord Jesus, for what breaks yours, Father God. I pray that that same fire that has fallen at Asbury, that I sensed when I was there, God, I pray that that fire would fall on us. God, I pray that it would consume the sin the, the, the brokenness, heal the hearts, God. Well, I thank you for the open door that you've given us. Lord, Lord, we just want to be that faithful church. Lord, I thank you for the open door that you've given us into your kingdom, God. We open that door, Father God. We enter your kingdom, God. We thank you your kingdom is here. A kingdom of power, a kingdom of glory, a kingdom of, 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 of love, God. A, a kingdom of your presence, Father God. Lord God, forgive it. Lord God, we just, we plead for awakening in this nation, God. Lord, help that awakening start in each one of us, Father God. Help that, that glory to start in each one of us, Father God. The glory, the awakening. Father God, Lord, we, we continue to fast and pray. We're not going to give up, Father God. Help us not to, to, to lose heart in, 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 in praying. Praying for this awakening, Father. Um. I just feel like inviting people up. I feel like this is, um, from the Lord was just saying, sometimes prayer meetings are like child labor, birth. And there's, there's these, you know, contractions and then rest, contractions and then rest, but God wants us to push this baby out. So I want you to come up. Some of you, I know you feel it in the pit of your stomach. You just want to travail and cry out. So I just want to invite you if that's you, or if you can't kneel, sit on the front row, but just all of us to come up here. Um, the worst feeling is after leaving a prayer meeting, feeling like you didn't release everything that the Lord gave you. So God, I just ask Lord, that Lord, everything you've placed in our hearts today, God, Lord, everything that you want us to travail and cry out for today, God, Father, we, we, we have no agenda God this time is your time Jesus this time is your time go where your vessels God we want you to come in our nation God we want to make room for you here God we make room for you at this altar God like Moses turning aside at the burning bush God we're turning aside God we're turning aside Lord we see you moving we see the fire God we see the fire we wanted in our life God speak to us Lord the Lord just reminded me that we went to these schools, every schoolhouse in Wilkes County, and we pled the blood and we removed the curses off the land. And He said, 
that we have the authority now to call for his revival, for his glory at every one of these schools. The elementary all the way up, not just the colleges and universities. He wants it here. He wants it in the church houses. We have the authority to pray for our brothers, our other pastors. We lift them up in faith. Lord wants his Bible taught in every one of our churches where it's not taught. Now he wants it in every one of our schoolhouses. We plead, Lord, for your glory to show here as it is at Asbury College. Lord, we repent over this county for having a division between the Wilkesboro and the North Wilkesboro for something that even the families can't even explain now. It's long forgotten. We, we repent, Lord. We bow down, we lay down, we say we're sorry, Lord. We thank you for healing of our land, Lord, and healing of our families. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. We pray, Lord, we cry out for revival, but we cry out, Lord, that there would be a bonfire planted on this ground. Father, that it would burn so bright. Father, that the lost would come out of the darkness of the forest, that they would see your light, that they would feel your love. But, Father, we pray in Jesus' name, we don't want just one bonfire. We want in this state, in this nation. Let your fire burn bright everywhere. Father, that the lost would see you. The lost would experience your love, Lord God, that they would turn and repent. They would repent. We ask, dear God, for awakening. The third great awakening, Lord God. Change the So we just declare over this house revival. I'm one of the ones that was in Hamilton, Alabama when Karen Wheaton started with the ramp. The Lord ordered me here this morning. I'm in a divine appointment. I sent young people with Lou to Washington in your time. I just declare it over you. The Lord says, even now that the rock has been fashioned in this place, and he said, this is a place where you can lay your head, for the ladder of heaven is coming, and the presence of the Lord will dwell in this place. The Lord says that the angels shall convene in this house. The Lord says he has sanctioned this place for his presence. Get ready, for God said the youth, the young people, People will come from not just this region, but they shall come from every nation, says the Lord. Can you say amen? amen.